Hey, I was just thinking. When we stopped for gas this morning, I think it was you who put the oil in. Hey, if you're gonna say I didn't put the right kind in, you're wrong. I used 10W30. And besides, motor oil would have nothing to do with this accident. True, but you can't latch the hood too well if you don't take the can out, you no-selling waste of space. I swear to God, you're worthless. I'm sorry about your car. But don't call me worthless. I'm trying my best. I'm not my dad. That's right. You're not your dad. He could sell a ketchup popsicle to a woman in white gloves. Ketchup popsicle? Yeah. I learned everything I know from him. I didn't have a father, and he looked out for me. But you, he was your real dad, and you just took it for granted. Hey, I'm Big Tom's son. He'll fix everything, so I'm allowed to be a moron. That's it! Get off. Get out of the car. It's go time. You and me. Look, Mommy, the rhino's getting too close to the car. Him too way to get out. He just a little guy. That's it, big boy. I'm gonna wail on you. You're gonna regret volunteering for this job, Porky. Hey, boys and girls, it's Papa Smurf. You don't want none of me. Think it through. Come on, give me your best shot. I'll give you a free one. Let me have it. That's it? Come on, you can do better than that, can't you, Captain Limpress? Try again. Hey, everybody, is there a window open? I feel a draft. Huh? <laughs> ah! If I wanted a kiss, I would have called your mother. Come on! Oh. That was a good one. All right, so there's a certain style we have at NIDA in our management meetings that always involves music lyrics, uh, sports analogies, or movie lines. So, what better way than to have somebody that can sell a ketchup popsicle to a woman wearing white gloves and has humor in doing it than to have Ingram talk about how to sell. It's all Bring yours, it Ingram. On. Thanks, Sean. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to start out with an exercise. I want to make sure everybody's got pen and paper with you because it's going to take a lot of notes. You know, I encourage you to use the notes in the back of the workbook. But the, the, uh, t I call them to-do sessions. I see Roy's on the right page out here. I'm, I'm big on writing stuff down. I believe our memories can only handle so much, and you've got to take notes and write it down. And I'm going to give you a lot of things that I want you to write them down, and hopefully you'll use some of them when you get back home. Everybody should have an index card. I asked RJ to pass out an index card, a little white index card. We're going to do a quick exercise to get started here. On, I want you to take this index card, if you would, and on this index card, I want you to draw a picture of the Statue of Liberty. All right, and there's a method to my madness, trust me, but I want to see everybody take out a pen and draw a picture of the Statue of Liberty. We all know what it looks like, right? We know exactly what it looks like. All I'm asking you to do is just write it down on this note card here. All right, now look at the person close to you and see if yours is better or worse than his or hers. Why do you think they're like that? When was the last time you took a course on drawing? That's why we're so bad at drawing, right? Well, how long has it been since you've had a sales course? You know, selling's very important. Probably to me, it's a lot more important than drawing, I hope, and I hope I'm better at it. Okay, but it just goes to show you, we hadn't had a, sell, we hadn't had a drawing course in a long time, hadn't had an art course in a long time. Look at the result. Look how bad we are at it, okay? If we want to get better at selling, we've got to practice selling, okay? We've got to have sales training. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today is different processes for that, okay? I want you to write these three steps down because I'll talk a lot about them. These three steps are what I use for my sales scripts. And I'm big on, on word tracks. And I'm, and I'm big on sales training too. I believe we as owners, Rick, we spend three or $400 per up that comes on the lot. I think I, want, I don't want my salespeople deciding how to talk to them. I want to tell them exactly what they're going to say. And we're going to do it through word tracks. And we're going to practice, drill, and rehearse until they do it right every time, OK? So what you're going to have to come up with for sales script is this. We're going to have different sales scripts. So we're going to have the ones called a meet and greet. I hope you're in the business. You know what a meet and greet is, okay? Meet and greet is what they're going to first say when they go out on the lot. And, and you've got to do your own. But uh, to me, I, I wouldn't let them say welcome, welcome to Crit, uh, Credit Quick. I didn't want them to say that. I just thought that was too worn out. That's okay if that works for you. You know, I kind of had the type of personality when I walked out there and talked to him, I said, which one can I sell you today? Right? 
I never felt like they were there for help. They're there to get a car, and I'm there to sell a car, you know. And then, and then I, I would not only tell them what to say, I would tell them what the customer's going to say back. Okay, generally when you say, which one can I sell you today? What do they say? Oh, I'm just looking. And I say, great, what are you looking for? Okay, you got to train your salespeople in responding to the objections, okay? I would let them say, great, what are you looking for? And that gets you right back in the conversation, okay? Which one can I sell you today? To have a good time, make it light, I would say, how many can I sell you today? It just kind of broke the ice and, you know, made them a little bit more relaxed. And then if I heard the objection, oh, I'm just looking, I'd say, great, what are you looking for? Or I'd say, great, I'm just selling. Which one can I sell you today? Okay, there's a meet and greet. There's also a walk around. You've got to have a script for a walk around. That's the second thing I want you to write down. We also have a script for the demo drive. Okay, and I don't know if y'all, what y'all's rules are, hours are, we take them on the same track. We have a track around the dealership with a lot of right turns and doesn't go across a lot of railroad tracks. And so, I, I, you know, don't let them take the car wherever they want. That way, if you have a breakdown, it happens occasionally with uh, $4,000 cars, you know, you'll know where they are, what the problem is. So, we, have, we not only have a demo script, we have a demo drive, okay, and they're going the same way. And by the way, the demo drive ends in one of my favorite sales pitches. When you pull back on the lot, what do you say, Roy? Do you have it, Rick? You're in the back seat, the two customers up front, pull it here in the sold lane. Mr. Customer, if you don't mind, just pull it right here in the sold lane. And we have an uh, area on the lot painted with yellow paint and it's got the big word sold in it. Okay, it's easy to do. Just put it here in the sold space. It's just selling, you know, it's kind of a presumptive close. So you're going to have a meet and greet, you're going to have a walk around, you're going to have a demo script, you need a phone script. Right? I don't know if y'all have ever taped your phone calls, but it can be beyond pathetic also. I mean, you really ought to listen to some of them and how they're handling your customers. It is beyond pathetic. And there's a company out there that does that for you. I think it's Phone Pops, and they'll record it, and they charge you a little bit and let you listen to it. Write down Phone Pops, and if you've never done you cannot imagine how bad your people are handling your phone calls. It is pathetic. We played some in my 20 group and they had called one of the dealerships and the, uh, the service department closed at 6 o'clock. Well they got the service writer on the phone and said, uh, hey I need some service this afternoon, what time do you close? He said 3.30. Right? He didn't want them coming in that late, it was a Friday, right? And then it went from bad to worse. He said 3.30, gosh there's no way I'm going to be able to make it. He said, uh, what should I do? I'm driving a Chevy so and so so and so and he said, well there's another Chevy dealer across town. He recommended the competition, and then these people on the phone are professionals. You know what he did? He said, gosh, I don't have that number with me. Is there any way I could ask you to look that number up for me? That service writer looked up the number to the competition and gave the phone number to them. The same kind of stuff could be happening in your store. I hope not, uh, but that was bad. I'll never forget that. Um, collection is also selling, right? And I've always said this is collection business. Gene, this is what we're selling. We're selling people to try to make a payment. Okay, collections are selling too, so they need to, they need to be constantly selling and they need to have word scripts too. I just think word, word tracks are, are the salvation of your people and they make, make it so much better. And I'm going to get into some of my favorites in just a minute. Of course, you need F&I scripts. A lot of people are recording F&I. Roy, do y'all record F&I? Rick, y'all record? You're not recording? A lot of people record it to make sure you know, people are saying the right things in the F&I, and we did that at the time. Um, so, first thing is a process. There's a three-step process. Process, number two is training. Write down two, training, and three is execution. Process, training, and execution. It's just so simple. Um, it's not easy, but it's simple. Um, just like I think the car business is. It's always seemed to me that the car business, and I think any business, is so fundamentally simple that many people fail at it. I think our business is so simple that we look at it and say, well, it can't be that simple. It has to be more complicated, and we proceed to make it more and more complicated because we think it just can't be so simple. So the end result is often failure because we ignore the simplicity of success. My point is that success is simple. 
It doesn't have to be very complicated. Take care of people. Give them a good product, good price, good service. Treat them as you would a friend by keeping in touch, and they'll come back and buy cars again and again and tell their friends too. It's so simple. Seems simple, doesn't it? You need a process, you need to train, and then they've got to execute. Okay, so the first two are your job. If you're the owner or manager, you've got to come up with the process, and it must be in writing. Your process has got to be in writing, so you need written processes, okay? And then you've got to train. How often should you train? Roy, how often do you have sales training? All the time. That's the right answer. All the time. It's not easy, and we don't, I hate a big sit-down sales training meeting every day. So we don't do it. We have what we call a huddle. We just get together standing and have a sales huddle. And we do a little bit of training every day. And the reason I do that is somebody told me that training was like brushing your teeth. That you can't wait till the end of the month, not brush all month, and then brush for an hour and a half at the end of the month. It doesn't work like that. Training is like brushing your teeth. You've got to do it a little bit every day. And that will really help. But I don't want big sit-down sales meetings at my store. We have huddles. And we just try to improve. And we work on some of the word tracks that I'm going to give you in a minute. Treat me like you want a relationship with me, not a commission from me. I think if we have a sign and share that with all our salespeople, that's the customer. Treat me like you want a relationship with me, not a commission from me. We also have a list of five reasons you should buy a car from us. I think that's important. You need to get with your people and say, hey, why, why, why would people buy here? Why do people buy here? Because if you don't know why people should buy here, are people going to want to buy there? I mean, you should know it and you should communicate it with people. And then we have five reasons why to buy today. Five reasons why to buy today is another list I think you should have in your store. So then a sales huddle would be, hey, what are the five reasons to buy here? What are the five reasons to buy today? And see if they know it, right? And they better know it. Remember, collections are selling. What I do for a living is very complicated. I buy something and then I sell it for more than I gave for it. I buy stuff and sell it for more than I gave for it. And I do it over and over and over. And I've made millions of dollars that way. It's simple. I turn no's into yeses. I try to turn no's into yeses. I think most sales aren't lost over a few dollars, they're lost over a few words. Word tracks are your people's salvation. Okay, there was a trainer that came to NADA years ago, and this was his material. His name was Paul Cummings. Paul Cummings is one of the best sales trainers I'd ever. I was so impressed with him, I took it back. We implemented it in our stores and still use it, okay? These are word tracks, and I want you to write these down, okay? These are really, really good and really important. And what they're going to do is they're going to teach your salespeople. You may have a lot of confidence like I do, and, and you may know you're good and confident with yourself, but your peop everybody's not like that. Everybody's not like you, and everybody doesn't have that confidence. So these word tracks that I'm going to give you in the next few minutes build confidence in people that aren't natural salespeople. The OB is our belief. Our belief. Our commitment, number two, I'll try not to go too fast, but you need to write these down. They all start with our, but it's just uh, starting phrases. Our desire, our goal is number four. Our hope, our mission, our policy, our success, and our wish. Now that's not complicated, is it? That's simple. Okay, you guys should have this memorized. They should be able to just run right through these. And this helps them, I'm telling you, it'll all pull together and this helps them have confidence on the sales floor one-on-one. -on -one. It makes them have confidence on the phone. It'll make your collectors have confidence. You know what I love to hear is somebody taking a sales call or a collection call and they're talking out loud. You know what I mean? You ever hear, Gene, somebody whispering on the phone, you're like, because the boss is around or the manager's around, they're not confident. I love when somebody's leaned back in their chair and they're talking loud and they don't mind me hearing because then I know 
they know what they're talking about and I know they're good at what they do and I know they're well trained and I know they got confidence and confidence is very sexy. I come from a long line of salespeople. My grandfather was a great salesman. He raised cattle in Monroe, North Carolina, right outside of Charlotte. And he went to Texas one time and got what was known at that time as just the Texas breeding bull. They had bulls down here that were a lot bigger than the bulls you get in Carolina. And he had, came, went all the way to Texas, put this bull on a train, brought him back to Monroe. And he was so much bigger than the bulls around there. And my grandfather was an entrepreneur just like me. Everybody wanted to come over and see the bull. Well, he decided, being an entrepreneur, he was going to charge them because he spent a lot of money going to Texas, bringing the bull home. And he was standing at the end of the driveway on Sundays, and he'd charge a dime to go up the driveway to the barn and see this bull. That's how big it was. And he'd charge a nickel for the kids. Well, one day, a man pulled up there in an old, beat-up station wagon. Doors about to fall off. And he got out of the car and went and told my grandfather that he'd love to go up and see the bull, but he was really poor. And he had 10 children. And the 10 children were all in the car in the station wagon. And there was no way he could afford to take them up the driveway to see this Texas breeding bull. And my grandfather said, uh, sir, let me ask you something. Those 10 kids you got in the car, are those all your kids? He said, yes, sir, I followed every one of them. He said, all 10 of those kids belong to you? He said, yes, sir. He said, I'll tell you what to do. He said, I want you to go get back in the car and drive up the driveway. There's going to be no charge for you and no charge for your 10 children. He said, you're going to let me and those 10 children go up and see that bull for free? My grandfather said, I want that bull to see you. <laughs> this is the nine square grid, okay? Again, these are word tracks that will build confidence in your people. No problem, number one. No problem. We say that all the time. No problem. Number two, be happy to. Be happy to. I mean, these are exactly like I got from Paul Commons, and we use them every week in training. Number three, I understand. I understand. Number four, please allow me. Number five, I'm confident. I'm confident we can get you approved today. I'm confident we can get you approved today. It's usually the easiest part of my job. E-P-O-M-J. Easiest part of my job. I like that one. That's selling. Number seven, wouldn't, it, wouldn't expect you to. Wouldn't expect you to. Wouldn't expect you to. Number eight, would you do me a favor? When I come back with the figures from the manager, would you do me a favor? If the price is too high, would you tell me no? Please tell me no is the last one. Would you do me a favor? When I come back with the figures, if they're too high, please tell me no. Okay, yeah, I'll tell you no. This is the We Are Grid. I like this one, too. And if you don't get all this, you can always call me or text me, and I'll send it, send it to you. Number one, we are aware. We are creative. We are dedicated. We are flexible. We are interested. We are optimistic. We are prepared. We are resourceful. And we are willing. We are prepared. We are resourceful. We are willing. And it's just amazing if you practice these with your people, how much better they'll get, how much, art how much more articulate they'll get 
You can't imagine how good this works. Load your gun with these bullets, okay? And we give these to them, and they have to tell us exactly what they mean. I'm going to give them to you. I'll go a little bit slower on these. My goal today is to do whatever I can to help you. My goal today is to do whatever I can to help you. Is that a great line? My goal today is to do whatever I can to help you. Can you see some value in that? Our goal today is to get you approved in less than an hour. Can you see some value in that? If you don't like the price, would you do me a favor and tell me no? If you don't like the price, would you do me a favor and tell me no? It's just non-confrontational. It really helps relax the customers. And the last one, could you be just a little bit more flexible with yourself? Can you be just a little bit more flexible with yourself, please? This is when you're going for that payment bump, right? Can you be just a little bit more flexible? In other words, that's better than, ah, come on, you're not going to buy shit for $300, you know? Can you, could you be just a little bit more flexible? If I went too fast, just see me afterwards and I'll get you copies of this. Can you see a little, can you see some value in that? That's creating little yeses. What you're trying to do is create little yeses. Can you see some value in that? First of all, let me apologize. I love this one. First of all, let me apologize. Our belief is bad things can happen to good people. I understand you went through a bad divorce, no problem. We're flexible with our down payments, and getting you approved is usually the easiest part of my job. This will give you people, this take, you know, we don't have to go hire salespeople. If we go out and just hire bodies with a smile, we can train this, and we can turn them into it. Believe it or not, you can really turn them into it just by training them. Our policy is we sell our cars as is, or our policy is to throw in a warranty on every car. Our belief is we sell high quality cars or we couldn't stay in business 50 years. Can you see some value in that? I'm trying to get a lot of little yeses. Can you see some value in that? Our goal is to have you in approval in less than an hour. I understand you only have 300 down. I'll get to the down payment bump in a minute. I hope you all know it already. If you don't, you've missed a lot of money. Our mission is to get you riding as soon as possible. We'll be happy to explain our down payment assistance program. Would you do me a favor? Let me get three minutes worth of information inside and we'll get the ball rolling. Let me get three minutes worth of information inside to get the ball rolling. I tell them when you're out on the lot, you know, I, had, I also had phrases like, sir, we sell 100 cars a month here, but we've never sold one out on the lot. Come on in, give me three minutes of information and we'll get you going. And they turn and walk. And if you turn and walk, they'll follow you, okay? but you've got to act like you do it over and over and over. And you know what you're doing. You sold three yesterday and two this morning before they got here, and you've got somebody coming in in two hours. You'd like to get them riding before they get here. Come on in, let's get you started. No, 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 I really don't have time. Well, at least come in and get registered for the TV. And just walk and don't turn around and look. They'll be behind you, okay? Come on in, at least get registered for the TV. Money down. Your people need to be trained about why we need more money down. The more money you put down, the lower your payment. The more money you put down, the less interest you pay. The more money you put down, the shorter the loan. The more money you put down, the nicer the car you qualify for. Are you all still working hard for down payments? I hope so. I call it shaking the tree. That's what's wrong with this business, Steve, is that when I started in it, 1989, we were buying $1,200 cars, Rick, and we were getting $500 down. Roll that forward. 2019, we're buying 6,000, five, six, 6,500, seven, $8,000 cars. Guess what the down payment is? 500. What it always, I mean, we've got to raise the down payments to take some of the risk out of the business. We've got to raise the down payments. This is Mr. Ed Bass, he's in the Buy Here, Pay Here Hall of Fame. 
I saw him in the exhibit hall trying to get a free lunch. Um, he is a legend. He really is. He's 80 years old now and uh, just a selling machine. He had one location in, sh in Chicago, but it took two city blocks. And Ed, I can't remember your highest number, but one month you sold. How many? What was your record month off that one location? 580. 580 cars, one month, one location. What did you average off that lot? 4, 450 cars, one location in Chicago. So you talk about a legend, and, and he approved every deal. Every deal went right through him. So a legend. And your receivable got up to $120 million. $120 million. So this is the guy, if I'm you, that I want to get cornered, and I want to buy him a drink this afternoon, and I want to learn something from him. Did you, who did the sales training for you, Ed? You did. No, I'm <laughs> not kidding. Uh, no. Um, no, I'll tell you, uh, I think I did, most of it. And uh, the key element, and I was listening and watching everything that uh, Ingram has talked about, and um, I was just thinking about something. Um, any of you have gotten married, or before you got married, you meet a nice girl, and uh, you go on the first date. And if you don't fall in love with her, and if she doesn't basically fall in love with you, you don't get the second date. And it's the same thing with selling an automobile. Before you start, I mean, every, every car dealer has that red Chevrolet. Prices are a little high, prices are a little bit low, it doesn't really matter. Whether it's a car, or a pair of shoes, or a sweater, a suit, it doesn't really matter. The buyer buys you, not the car. You walk into a store, you want to buy a red, a, red, a red sweater. You're willing to pay $30. They don't have a red one, they have a blue one. And instead of 30, it's 45. If the person is really a terrific person, and you really like that person, and you fall in love with that person, you're going to buy the blue one and you're going to pay the 45. If that person has the red one and it's 30, but you hate the guy, you, you just don't like him, he's not treating you right, you don't buy from him. So it's the same thing whether you're buying a sweater or you're buying a car or you're selling a car. And that's what it's, that's what it's all about. So you can think about everything that Ingram has talked about. And that's good. That's all great stuff. But the key element is, right off the bat, before you start going into all the, all the numbers, you better, you better get them to really fall in love with you. Because otherwise, you can do all kinds of things, and it won't work. So basically, what Ingram has said is terrific. And you think about it, and I've been listening to him while, while he's talking. And, you know, everything he's saying is correct. But you got to first have him really fall in love with you. If he doesn't like you, it's gone. i got to tell a great story on Ed. So Ed comes to Monroe. We had something called the boot camp we did in Monroe. And people would come. It's a two-day, really intense, buy here, pay here training. Well, Ed came one time as a guest of mine. And so we've got 15 or 20 people down there in this boot camp. And we jump in some vans. And we go to my sales, one of my sales lots. And this sales lot's awesome. It's like on a four-lane highway, and, and it's got a lot of road fronts, and it's right across the street from Walmart. It's exactly what you'd want for buy here, pay here. Well, Ed gets out of the car, and he's looking at my lot, and looking at all the road frontage that I have, and he says, Ingram, how many are you selling off this lot? And I said, you know, good month, 50, 55. He says, I could do 300. <laughs> and Ed, he said, well, this road frontage, there's no way I wouldn't do 300. All these people are paying big bucks to come up there and see how to do it, you know, and he's making fun of me for only selling 55 cars off this location. But anyway, I've, let me run through some other stuff, Ed. I bet you use this down payment bump. What's the most money? And this isn't just for down payment. This is a great bump. I, I'm probably plowing plowed ground here if you've been in the car business for a while. I hope so anyway. But what's the most you can put down today? 500. And we don't even look up. I train my people. Just keep looking down and say 500 up to... Uh, uh, 600, okay, six, great, maximum beam. And you will not believe how many times these people will just bump themselves. 500 up to 750. All right, maximum beam. 
And then whatever they come up then, I said, all right, but if it had to do with you taking the car home today or not, what would that number be? Sometimes they say, you know, I told you 1,000 was the most. I told, you know, but if you can just with a couple of words, if you can bump them $200, Steve, there's a reason we're still getting five, $600 down today. It's 2019. Why are we settling for that? You know, we've got to try to bump these people. It's amazing how resourceful they are and how much money they can come up with. So this same, same holds true with your car payment. What payment do you want today? 400, I understand, 400 up to, great, 425, but all right, maximum being. Maximum being. All right, but, but if it had to do with you taking the car home today or not, what, how high could you go? It's just called a down payment bump. We use it all the time, okay? Um, combined grid, let me get on through this. We've been through these. It's just when you put them all together, okay? Mr. Bass, how often would you do sales training? Daily, weekly, or what? Our success comes from our reconditioning procedures and our 12-month, 12 12,000-mile 12, warranty. Can you see some value in that? We have a 12-month, 12 12,000-mile 12, warranty. Can you see some value in that? It's good stuff. Powerful, powerful bullets. Other, other of my favorite lines I wrote down I want to share with you other than pull it into the sold lane. We use that coming in off of a test drive, right? Pull it in the sort of like, we get the customer involved. When we get out, we say, could you please read the last six of that VIN number? You know, because we're assuming that we're going to close this deal. So we get the customer involved by reading the last six of the VIN number. Getting them taking mental ownership of the car, okay? Every time they come back from the tower, every time they come back from the manager, they come in, whatever they're bringing, whatever four square you're working, they come in and say, congratulations, I got great news. Okay? Write that one down. Congratulations, I got great news. They may have wanted a 400 payment, and you may be at 549, but say, congratulations, I can get you at 549. I got great news. Here's the one I also like. You know, with a trade in a car, Rick, we say, would, would, you need a box for your car, or will a bag do to clean out your trade? You're going to need a box, or will it just this bag do to clean out your trade in? What? What are you talking about? Clean out my trade, you know. So it's just always be closing. It's a sales line, and I love it, you know. Can you put all your stuff in this bag, or will you need a box to clean out your trade in? I like to have fun when I'm selling. I'm just that kind of guy. Well, I sell a lot of real estate, too, and it doesn't matter if it's a car or a farm or a piece of real estate or apartment complex. I'll say to them, I'll say, you know what? I'd buy this myself if I didn't already own it. I like to have fun like that. I say, I'd buy this for myself if I didn't already own it. So they usually look at me like I'm crazy, but they know I like to have a good time. Here's a line that gets all your salespeople out of sticky situations. I don't know, but I'll find out for you. Isn't that a great word track? I don't know, but I'll find out for you. Why do you have to know, you know, and I've got written down here, don't let what you want to say interfere with what you want to accomplish. Don't let what you want to say interfere with what you want to accomplish. I was selling a truck one time. I was brand new. You know, the guy comes up to me, an older gentleman, and says, um, after we drive the car and I tell him everything I know about it. He asked me how much it weighs. So can you tell me how much this truck weighs? And I was like, you know, what I wanted to say is, are you going to drive it or are you going to carry it? But I didn't. I said, no, sir, I don't know, but I'll find out for you. I don't know, but I'll find out for you. Word tracks are important, and you got to get them right. you got to get them right, because there are a lot of different ways to say the same thing. You know, if I look to my wife and say, honey, your makeup, when I look, you know, you got a face that can stop a clock. Probably get a slap on the face. But if I look at her and say, honey, when I look at you, time stands still. Probably get a little kiss on the cheek for that one. So you got to make sure you're saying it the right way. And tone of voice is important. I'll tell you how I know that tone of voice is so important. I had three kids, and when I was yelling at my kids, the dog would go get under the bed. That dog didn't know how to speak English, right? But he knew exactly what I was talking about. So tone of voice is very important. Lead and they will follow. I've told you that line. Sir, we sell a lot of cars here. We sell 50 a month. We sell 100 a month. We never sold one out on the parking lot. Come on in. Let's get some information. Same with a phone call. I tell my people on the phone, you're just selling an appointment. Don't try to sell the car on the phone. On the phone. Don't try to sell the car. You're just selling an appointment. And how we book the appointments, and we're always successful at this, is I tell them to do it like a doctor's office. Okay, I don't want them saying, yeah, why don't you just come in Saturday morning? 
Well, Saturday morning could be from 8 a.m. to noon, you know, any time. And I said, you'd never call the doctor's office. And they say, yeah, you need an appointment. Just come in Tuesday afternoon. They said, we want to set appointments just like they set appointments at the doctor's office, okay? And we want the perception that we're busy. So he said, let me check my book, okay? I've got somebody coming in at 2 on Tuesday and 2.15. Will 3 o'clock be okay or would 3.15 be better? And we really saw a lot more success if we would set the appointments at quarter after and quarter till, okay? If you tell somebody 3.15, they think, boy, they're really, they are busy, you know. Hey, come in 3 o'clock Tuesday. No, nope, well, I got somebody coming in right before you. Make it 315. Oh, with 245 be better. We like to set the appointments on the quarter of an hour. You got to find out where the hot buttons are. People are usually buying to solve a problem. I've got a saying that I say, I like butter pecan ice cream, but when I go fishing, I use worms because fish like worms, okay? I want to catch a fish. Um, speaking of ice cream, I went in an ice cream store one time as a kid. This is selling. And I went up to the man and said, I'd like a scoop of butter pecan ice cream. How much is it? He says, it's a dollar. And I said, I was a fat kid and wanted that ice cream bad. And I said, well, I, I could buy one across the street, and it's only 75 cents. And he said, well, why didn't you buy it over there, son? And I said, because they're out of butter pecan ice cream. And this man looked at me, and he said, son, if I was out, mine would be 75 cents, too. So I learned something that day, <laughs> you know. This is something we use in our sales training, a line that I really like. The more you sweat in practice, the less you bleed in the battle. You know, everybody hates role playing. I hate it. Uh, I like to lead it because it's a lot more comfortable leading it. than. But, uh, but everybody hates role playing, but role playing works, y'all. Role playing is corny. Cool people like me don't like to do it because they get embarrassed. It's awkward, but make your people do role playing and then... Make them, uh, make them sweat in the practice. Then they won't bleed in the battle. So role playing just works over and over and over. Um, action comes before motivation. That's probably one of the greatest things that I ever learned is somebody said, Ingham, what comes first, action or motivation? I said, I guess motivation. You know, you kind of lay around on the couch, wait till you get motivation, then you get up and, and do something. He said, polar opposite is true. He said, motivation comes before action. I mean, did I say that right? Action's got to precede the motivation. Action comes first. Get up. What I'm saying, the point in the ramble is get up, get your salespeople huddled, get them doing some training, get them out on the lot, moving the lot around. What happens? All of a sudden, some ups start coming up, you know? We take the cars, put $5 worth of gas in them, run to the station and back. They need to be driven. Get busy, get them going. Action creates motivation. We spend a lot of time trying to keep moving. I don't want to see salesmen just sitting. Um, I've always been able to sell. And like I said, I was never that smart, so I, I always figured I had to. When I went to college at NC State, and in your senior year, I'm graduating, and you got to go interview for a job. So you're going to the career placement planning, but all the good jobs, you had to have like a 3.4 GPA, or they wouldn't let you sign up for the interview, right? You remember that? I had like a 2.6, maybe at best, a 2.6, and there was a company called Johnson & Johnson, and they, you know, they were kind of the, the, the one you wanted to work for coming out of college that time because they made a lot of money. Well, the lady wouldn't even let me sign up for the interview on the interview sheet because I had a 2-6 and they had to have a 3-4 to sign up. But I wasn't going to accept no for an answer. So I just looked down on the sheet and saw the last appointment was at 3.30. Okay, so 3.30, I show up right at this interview room with my coat and my tie and my resume and that person walks out of the interview and I just walk right in. Hey, my name's Ingram Walters and they wouldn't let me sign up for the interview because I had a 2.6 GPA. But this is about selling, isn't it? I see you got a briefcase there, I'll walk you to your car. You know, and I grab his briefcase and just walk him out and I'm selling myself the whole time. Well, who's, what's the last thing this guy remembers at the end of the day? This crazy kid that couldn't sign up, wouldn't take no for an answer, showed up in a coat and tie anyway and walked me to the car and was in my ear telling me how good he was the whole way. And he said he interviewed three people that day with a perfect 4.0 GPA. I said, you better not hire them. He said, why? I said, hell, they go to work anywhere. A guy like me is going to stick with you. Two six, I don't have the options. I don't have the options that guy has. I wouldn't hire them. 
Folks, the car business is changing. Buying cars is changing. The way we buy cars, we've heard a lot about that at this show. Buy here, pay here is certainly changing. GPS is changing. Starter interrupts are all changing. Internet's changing. Social media is changing. Everything. Are you changing? Make sure you're changing. I think I'm right on time, and I'm looking forward to seeing all y'all in the exhibit hall. I'm Ingram Walters, and if you need copies of anything I've got, uh, my cell phone number hadn't changed in, since, they, since it was a bag phone. And I've got a business card. If I got my pants on, I got a business card in my pocket. So see me. I'll be glad to help you any way I can. Thank you very much.